Welcome to another video. In this video, I am going to prove that it is impossible for you to have the square root of 2, the square root of 5, and the square root of 7 in the same geometric progression, what you call a geometric sequence. Now, the question is not saying that the three of them do not form a geometric sequence. What it's saying is the three of them cannot be present at the same time in any geometric sequence. So they don't have to follow each other. It might be one is at the beginning, one is somewhere in the middle, and one is lost far away in the future, but the three of them can be present at the same time. Let's get into the video. So, the way to prove this is to do it by contradiction, which means you're going to assume that there, re there exists some geometric progression that contains square root of 2 as a term, square root of 5 as a term, and square root of 7 as a term, and then you, we have to show that it doesn't make any sense. Okay, that's how you do proof by contradiction, because you're going to say something that's going to go, ah, oh, yeah, that doesn't make sense. So it means the original assumption was incorrect. So let's begin. So what we're going to do is assume that the square root of 2, the square root of 5, the square root of 7 are in the same geometric progression. Now, what is the implication of that? It means that, remember, for any geometric progression, you can write any term as ar raised to power n, where n is the the term that it represents. Okay, quickly, if there are two ways a geometric progression can be, it is either it is increasing or it is decreasing, okay? It, it cannot be a constant geometric progression, then it should just be a constant. All the terms will be the same if the common ratio is 1, okay? Now, because we want to be consistent, let's assume that our common ratio is just positive, so we don't have the alternating cases of it's plus now, it's minus later, plus minus. So let's just say that we, we don't want to deal with the signs, although it will not be relevant, it doesn't matter, okay? Let's just um, also assume that the common ratio in this case is greater than 1. That means if you start from a small number, you're going to end with a bigger number. If you say the common ratio, the absolute value, is less than 1, it means you're going to be starting from a bigger number and you'll be going down. But just to make this proof easy, we're going to assume that the common ratio is greater than 1. So, now, this is the point. Every term in a geometric sequence is this. a sub n is the term. The nth term is always the first term multiplied by the common ratio raised to n, where n is the number it occupies in the order of 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the first term, second term, third term. So n is a natural number, okay? This is generally how you write the formula for a geometric sequence. So that means there has to be a way to write this this way, and this and this. So we're going to try doing that. So that means that the square root of 2 can be written as a1 r raised to power some natural number because we want them to be different, let's say the first letter, let's use i for the smallest, and then we can say the square root of 5 will be a1, the first term, r raised to the power, let's call it j. Remember that r and j, I mean, i and j are not the same because the numbers are increasing and the positions are changing, so this is a natural number, this is a natural number, it's just that j is bigger than r because you're multiplying, it's getting bigger, okay? And um, one more, square root of 7 will be a1, r to the, let's call it k. So we have these three representations of these three numbers somewhere. We're not saying they're consecutive, they follow each other, but they're just somewhere, okay? Now, what is the implication of this? Firstly, Everybody has got a1, a1, a1. We can get rid of that a1 by doing division, because if you divide, if you put this on top of this, you're going to get rid of the a1. So you have fewer things to deal with. So here, we're going to have rad. Let's do it here. We know that 
the square root. If you divide this by this, you're going to end up with square root of 5 over 2. If you combine it, will be equal to this divided by this. But that way, these two cancel out. You have r to the j divided by r to the i. r to the j over r to the i, which is the same thing as r to the j minus i. If you do the same thing to this and this, let's do this one, okay? You're going to have the square root of 7 over 5 equals r to the k over r to the j, which is r to the k minus j. Now remember all the assumptions we made from the beginning that r to the j is, j is greater than i and k is greater than j, okay? So now it means, because these are two natural numbers, the difference between two natural numbers is another natural number, okay? The same thing here. So we can say, um, oh, there was another claim I didn't make here. Remember that i is not equal to j and is not equal to k. The three numbers are not the same. Otherwise, you're going to be getting zero in one of these. And you can't have a zero as the exponent because it means that this is the same thing as this, which is not true because these two are not the same. Okay, so um, let's do this just to make it cleaner. Let m be equal to j minus i, and let n be equal to k minus j. So we can rewrite these two expressions as the square root of 5 over 2 equals r to the m, and the square root, the square root of 7 over 5 equals r to the n. Okay. Ta da da tap 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 tap. Let's square both sides. If we square both sides, we're going to end up with 5 over. No. Let's rewrite both sides actually. 5 over 2. You know what? Uh. Da, 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 da. I'm just trying to find a way. The, the thing is, you see how I was able to get rid of this A at the beginning? I want to get rid of the R. So if I want to get rid of the R, this I can write as 5 over 2 raised to 1 half equals R to the M, which means if I take the Mth root of both sides, I'm going to end up with 5 over 2 raised to power 1 over 2m equals r. Do you see that? I just took the mth root of both sides, and taking a root means the m is going to be in the denominator, and that's what I have, what I have here. So the same thing, this is going to be, if I isolate r here, I'm going to have seven over five, raised to power 1 over 2n is equal to r. Sorry, 1 over 2 equals r to the n. And then, if I isolate r, I'm going to be getting 7 over 5 raised to 1 over 2n. So the similar thing I did here. This is n and this is m. So this r doesn't have to be here. I can actually move it here and remove it here. So now I have an equation. This is equal to this, but remember the mission. Let's, let's clean this up, nice. The mission is to, we don't know what these guys are, but we know they're just natural numbers, okay? So what we're gonna do is, because I don't like this fraction, we're gonna raise this to the power 2mn, raise this also to the power 2mn, because, two, because 2mn is the LCM of the two exponents. That's how you do it. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to raise this to power 2mn, and I'm going to raise this also, move this away, to power 2mn, okay, equals r. 
well, it will no longer be our, well, it would be too, but this has to be raised to parts women. But we don't need this guy anymore, do we? No. So, but if you raise R to power 2 MN, it's still going to give you another constant. It doesn't matter. Just because it's still in the picture. I don't need it though. Okay. Now, what does this do? It helps me say that this is 5 over 2 raised to power N. This tells me it's 7 over 5 raised to power M. And that's it. I don't need this guy. This is, this is all I need right now, okay? This is just in the picture, distracting. I'm going to erase it. So with this, we can then split what we have into bits. Because now you're gonna see that the relationship that we're claiming exists can never exist, okay? It is impossible to have numbers like this. Watch this. If I split these, I'm going to have 5 to the n over 2 to the n, that's the split of this, equals 7 to the m over 5 to the m. If I cross multiply, see what I get. I get this times this is going to be 5 raised to power n plus m. Remember, n plus m is another natural number. And it's going to be equal to this times this, which is 2 to the n times 7 to the m. And this is where the problem arises, because this is 5. 5 raised to power any integer is just 5 times 5 times 5, the number of whatever this gives us. So your answer is just going to be a multiple of 5, which is going to be an odd number. This is going to be odd, always odd. But if you look at the right hand side, you can clearly see a 2. 2 times 2 times 2 times how many times, it doesn't matter how many times you multiply 2, that's going to be an even number times an odd number, it's going to be even. The right hand side is going to be even. Fundamental theorem of arithmetic says that an odd number can never be equal to an even number, and that's it. So by reason of the parity of both sides, this equation can never exist, which means the line before it cannot exist, this cannot exist, this cannot exist, this cannot exist, this, 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 this cannot exist. The assumption cannot exist, and that's it, okay? So this is a contradiction. You can put it here. Since, An odd number cannot equal an even number. We can clearly say that rad 2, rad 5, rad 7 cannot be in the same geometric progression. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.